So safety second, right? What a lot of nonsense I hear you say. Why wouldn't you put safety first? But stay with me and I'll explain. If you are new to this channel, this is why I promote this approach now. So this very innocent looking crash left me with a significant shoulder ligament damage and undetermined number of weeks of the bike. I've had a lot of time to think now and however I look at it, I always arrive at the same conclusion now. Wear all your body armor on every ride. Always. You think you're going for a chill ride with friends? Wear your body armor. You think you're going to be too hot? Doesn't matter. Wear your body armor. Sooner or later it will pay off and you'll thank me. Don't be like me. So would this make a difference in a crash? I gotta be honest, the answer is I can't be 100% sure. I've had crashes before where I believed the pads have taken majority of the impact and prevented some serious injuries. But I've also had crashes where the pads have slipped off. The main thing is the risk mitigation. Wearing your body armor significantly reduces the risk of you having a major injury. So why wouldn't you wear it on every single ride? Another good example is wearing a full face helmet. So very early days in my riding career, I attempted a jump, came up short and fell head first into brambles. So as you can imagine, that was not very pleasant. Since then, I always wear a full face helmet. Let's actually inspect this body armor and see how good actually is it. I've owned this for quite a while and I've not really had a chance to look. So this is the shoulder padding. I think it's a DPD form which had this on impact. When you press it hard, it looks like it's going to do the job. Yeah, so this is the shoulder pad, which is what interests me the most because I don't want to be crushing on the shoulder ever again. So there's another pad here. This is not DPD, this is just foam. It's thicker. What's the level of protection on this? I'm not sure. So this Troy Lee Designs padded shirt cost me 72 pounds, which I think it's a pretty good deal, offers a decent level of protection so it's a compromise between a full dh kit and being comfortable let's look at the back yeah a bit disgusting as you can see yeah the top part i think it's the foam that hardens the bottom part it's just a piece of foam fairly thick i mean it does take some of the impact for sure i think the sides are the same story as the back yeah that doesn't look too bad actually that feels like it will take some impact. Probably one thing I'm going to have to think hard about replacing and maybe go for something a bit more protective. Let's look at this full face helmet next. So this is a Bell Super Air helmet with removable chin. Fairly easy to remove. But if I had the chance, I wouldn't bother with the removable chin. Because like I said, what's the point? You never know when you're going to need that chin piece actually. It's not DH rated but feels very solid and sturdy as you can see it's done the job already I don't think that's weakened it yet so I think it's still good to go plenty of vents so you're not going to be hot in it it's very light as well and when you think about it the full face helmets these days are so light and breathable you can have a very expensive trip to the dentist if you're not wearing one. Next we have elbow pads. It's the POC VPD 2.0. Pad is not removable, but you just wash it as a whole. Same thing, the, the foam does harden on impact and this saved me quite a few times from a broken elbow, I reckon. But they do have a tendency of slipping if you don't do it tight enough. Generally, I've been quite happy with those. Then we have Samskill 7 IDP knee pads. They've seen better days. I tend to ride in overgrown areas. They do have a removable pad. Let's just remove it and inspect it to see if it's up to the job. A fairly thick pad, which does feel like it's taking a lot of impact. Definitely better pad than the one in the body armor. And even in the elbow pads, I would say, they've saved me quite a few times from a knee injury, I reckon. So they still seem good. So I'm gonna just continue to wear them. Don't need to replace them, I don't think. Let's not forget about the safety glasses. So if you're like me, have been smacked over your face plenty of times by riding in the woods, then you know the importance of wearing riding glasses. You do want to do everything's possible to avoid stick hitting your in your eye. What I use is this cheap pair of Rock Bros photochromic riding glasses, which have been brilliant for the money I paid for them, to be honest. They are very light, they're comfortable, and what is the most important thing is that they actually stay on my face. 
on a really chunky DH trails. The photochromic part is not the best, I'm not going to lie. As you can see, they already shaded a little bit, but in full sun, it's not really enough. But they work for me because I ride mostly in the woods, so I do want them to stay plain. So let's talk about the subject from the intro for a minute. So safety second is an interesting take on risk mitigation, not just in mountain biking, but in high risk sports in general. The idea here is that you can't really put safety first because if you were to put the safety first, you wouldn't be participating in a high risk sport in the first place. So what it means is that safety second is the next best approach that forces you to use all possible means to reduce the risk to a minimum. So my take on this is, and how this translates to my riding is, I'm going to use all the possible safety gear, no matter what riding conditions, mood I am in, or even if I'm getting dead, the looks from people. It's as simple as that. Next we have 100% brisker gloves. Brilliant pair of gloves, meant to be for winter riding. I use them all year round, to be fair. I don't think they are that warm when it's really, really cold. You still feel it in the fingers, but they are not too hot in the summer either. And they offer obviously some protection. I'm not riding in fingerless gloves or even without the gloves. I think it's pretty stupid if you ask me. This is the original pair. I had it for probably about three years. They lasted very, very long time and they're still good. They did have a tear on the stitching, but thanks to my lovely wife, she fixed it for me and they're still good to go. And last but not least, we have 510's Pro Rider Mid MTB shoes. This has got to be one of the better purchases in terms of safety gear. I, the usual perfect grip on the pedals, a real good protection for your toes. This is rock hard. I've hit rocks and they've protected my toes. Then you have some D3O ankle protection, which is a great addition, I think. And as winter is upon us, they do offer quite a good waterproof protection against the elements. I still wear waterproof socks with them, but they are pretty good and very comfortable. Good better shoes, these. So I think that concludes the video. Uh, one thing I would like to ask is if you have any sort of experience with body armor, which is a good compromise between what I'm currently wearing and a full plastic DH body kit, which is not very comfortable to wear. I would like to hear from you. So just put the recommendations in the comment if you can. Thanks.